Hello and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick Gehagen with Alir. I uh, want to start out by welcoming everyone to today's webinar. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping items to start us off. Um, all attendees uh, today are going to be placed on mute just because there are quite a few of you and uh, just keep the presentation moving along. However, if you do have any questions, please feel free to submit them through the question portal and um, we may answer them throughout or definitely at the end of the presentation. Um, there are going to be a series of polls throughout the session today. Uh, we do ask that you participate in those. It'll help us tailor both today's webinar and any future webinars, uh, but we may be able to um, tailor some of today's content based on the way you answer those polls. Um, uh, one other note, a copy of today's presentation will be sent out um, to any of you that are in attendance uh, or registered for the webinar. So we'll send that out in just a couple of days. And also any of our webinars, uh, either today's or any past webinars, are available on the Allure website as well as on our the Allure YouTube channel. So just a couple of housekeeping items to get us started. And uh, again, please don't hesitate to add comments or uh, ask questions in the question portal and we'll be keeping an eye on that throughout the content today. So again, thank you all very much for joining us. Um, we'll start out with just some brief introductions. I already introduced myself. Um, my name is Patrick Gehagen. I'm a managing consultant with Alir. Um, I work in what we call our strategic advisory services division, focusing mostly on business process uh, re-engineering and optimization. Um, and uh, have a particular focus uh, working with the Canon team on accounts payable uh, business process and technology uh, automation. So I'll turn it over to uh, Cliff to introduce himself. Thank you, Patrick. Um, I'm Cliff Otan, a senior solutions consultant with Canon Imaging and Imaging Solutions. Um, we're proud to be presenting here and to have Lear as um, our finest partner. So uh, I do I do thank you for participating today and look forward to this demonstration. Great, thanks, Cliff. So uh, Cliff and I will be uh, handling the presentation today, and uh, we'll be kind of flipping it back and forth. And again, uh, feel free to ask either one of us questions as we go. So a little bit just quickly about Alir. So uh, Alir was established in 2005. We're celebrating our 13th year of business this year. Um, really, what our main focus is is um, partnering with our clients to um, help them implement new technologies, new business processes, but really to advise them on the strategic direction of their companies. Um, there's a lot going on in the ERP uh, and finance and HCM world today, so uh, and we understand that, and we want to help you understand both how which direction to go and how to unlock the most uh, from your current software investments. Uh, we have a lot of understanding and expertise both in the Oracle Cloud, HCM, and ERP, as well as PeopleSoft, uh, Finance, and HCM. Um, we have over 200 uh, clients at the moment, uh, and uh, we really uh, spread across a lot of different industries uh, and big and small companies. Uh, again, I work for our Strategic Advisory Services Division, so uh, we work a lot on helping people develop the roadmap for their IT departments, making big decisions on technology, and a lot of uh, process improvement that uh, may or may not relate directly to technology investments. i turn it over to Cliff, and obviously one very important logo on there is that we are a solutions partner with the Canon team, and I'm gonna turn it over to Cliff to do an introduction about Canon. Thank, thank you, Patrick. Um, so, you know, most people uh, recognize the Canon name, uh, if for nothing else, for our cameras and lenses. Um, Canon itself has, has been in business a really long time, since uh, 1937. But um, but the, the part of the, of the company, really, that we're interested in today and that I work for and that Patrick uh, is really familiar with as far as our solutions is Canon Information and Imaging Solutions. Um, we sometimes just simply refer to ourselves as uh, CIIS. So we're a wholly owned subsidiary of Canon. Uh, we were established in, in 1969, uh, quite a few years back. And um, we've been a, a technology innovator, really, for the past 32 years. Um, as you can see here, we've all consistently ranked in the, the top five of U.S. patent earners. Um, so what we do is we do bring together 
um, the, the imaging technology and the data management experience within Canon um, to deliver um, solutions that add value for, for many different um, areas of the market. Increasingly, uh, ERP integration with systems like PeopleSoft and, and the workflow and capture that goes along with things like accounts payable automation. Um, so um, also, you know, it might be notable to, to mention too that in 2017, for, from the Institute of Finance and Management, we were uh, awarded their Game Changer Award. So that's something that we're really proud of as well. Thank you. Great, thanks Cliff. So um, just a brief introduction on why some of you may find yourselves here today, and we'll be asking you a little bit about that in a little bit, but um, one of the big reasons that we find that people are looking at AP automation solutions in general is that uh, some of the reasons on your screen here, right, that you're spending a lot of time uh, entering data, not as much time analyzing it, that you're uh, either incurring late fees, missing out on early pay discounts, and really just that the end-to-end -end process is not going fast enough and you're experiencing roadblocks throughout. Um, also, maybe you have either an unintegrated solution or a solution that doesn't include any kind of defined workflow rules or defined routing rules and policies, and um, that's a big uh, part of doing an AP automation solution that we'll talk about in a little bit. And one of the big items that we're going to talk about shortly is that um, maybe you're trying uh, to determine what your path forward is with your current ERP solution. Um, we're going to talk a lot about PeopleSoft today, but uh, as we know, all of the major ERP solutions have kind of shifted their focus to more of a continuous delivery model. Um, and maybe you're trying to figure out, you know, how AP automation fits with that. And then, uh, as always, you know, all of us are trying to do more with less, and, and that's a big focus of something uh, that we're going to talk about today. So some reasons to automate, right? So all of those reasons might be reasons that you're attending, um, but there's a lot of reasons that maybe uh, you may bring to your C-suite and can talk to why you may want to automate. One of the um, big reasons is that, you know, it's the way, the direction that a lot of accounts payable departments are going, right? 59.4% uh, of departments surveyed saying that they are investing in automation and now is the time to do that as the products are getting better and, and the integrations are getting tighter. Um, a big reason to automate that we're going to show you today is to minimize errors. As you can see, uh, minimizing errors and, and the, um, the costs associated with fixing errors is one of the big uh, reasons that executives are citing for uh, moving to an automated solution. And again, uh, one of the key metrics that we talk about is um, on-time payments. And, and you can see that 45% of businesses that implement an automation solution uh, greatly increase their on-time payment percentage. So just a couple of reasons, and we're going to dive a little bit deeper into these, but um, start thinking about you know maybe the reasons that you are looking at automating your AP. Okay. So we do have a, a poll question that we're going to start out with here, which is to ask you about uh, what version of PeopleSoft you're currently running. So um, for those of you who are on PeopleSoft, uh, are you on uh, PeopleSoft 9.2, uh, Palm 18 or greater? Um, are you on PeopleSoft 9.2 but not quite on 18? Are you on a previous version of PeopleSoft such as 9.1 or earlier? Or do you not utilize PeopleSoft? Uh, perhaps you use another ERP, um, JD Edwards or EBS or uh, Oracle Cloud. Um, and feel free to share that in the questions or comments portion of the um, of the presentation. So we'll give you just a, a moment here to answer the question and um, then we'll share those results with you. Okay, so on your screen uh, you should be able to see the uh, the results of the poll. Uh, what you're seeing here is that most of you are on uh, 9.2, but uh, some of you are on 18, or and some of you are uh, not quite on 18, which is common. I think we see a lot of different people on uh, those two different, or somewhere uh, in the mid palm images right now. I think the most current is on 20. I think we're on 26 right now. So um, 
that rolls right into our next comment here. So um, as, as you all know, for those of you who are on PeopleSoft 9.2 or on uh, another one of the other ERPs that's moved to this, what we call continuous de delivery, is that increased agility is really key in this, is in this new world of um, multiple releases per year, right? Um, you know, they say no more upgrades, which is great, but um, at the same time, you are um, being expected to be a little more up to date. You do have to get current every two years or so, um, but you do have a little more flexibility on how you do it. No, no giant upgrades anymore, and really you want to get into this cycle of, um, of taking PUM updates and um, taking on new technology, analyzing new features, um, and really they're delivering a much better product to you in shorter periods of time, uh, which is great. But you do have to stay a lot more engaged. And um, one of the key things that Alir believes in, and I think many people would agree with us, is that um, with the increased agility, with the increased need to, up, to do these um, PUM updates on a frequent basis, maybe annually or biannually, um, you do need to um, minimize the customizations that you have in your environment. And um, many of the older um, AP automation solutions, um, and even many on the market today, if you're integrating to things like PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, EBS, they do require you to build a custom integration uh, into the system. So. Um, when Alir was looking for uh, an AP automation solution for some of our clients, uh, we uh, began working with Canon because of something within uh, PeopleSoft, actually, that's called the open imaging integration. And this relates back to that question we asked a few minutes ago, which is which PUM update you were on, because uh, beginning in PUM 18, um, you have full functionality into what's called the open imaging integration which is a set of web services um, co-developed between Canon and um, PeopleSoft that allows you to integrate an imaging solution into PeopleSoft. So um, while you can integrate any imaging solution into PeopleSoft through this method, um, Canon is the only one who's achieved the validated integration um, into this uh, using this set of web services. And we're going to go into all these details, so I'm not going to cover it um, uh, directly, but uh, it allows you to both build a voucher, uh, validate against master data within, within PeopleSoft without duplicating it, um, and uh, also to um, put that image of the invoice right into both the approval and the voucher pages. So Cliff is going to go into that in a little more details, but as far as the differentiator between this AP automation solution and others, and why Alir and Canon, why Alir has uh, been so excited to partner with Canon on this is because of this uh, validated integration um, that you can see here. So, all right, time for our second poll question. Um, just so that we can get an idea about um, volumes of how many invoices each of you process, how many invoices does your organization process? Is it uh, one to a thousand a month, um, one thousand to five thousand a month, five thousand to fifteen thousand a month, fifteen to thirty thousand a month? or more than 30,000 invoices per month. I'll give you just a few seconds here to answer that. And um, again, ballparks are fine. No one's going to hold you to these numbers. Um, and then we'll close this in a moment and let you kind of know where everyone is falling. Okay, it sounds like most of you are in that five to 15,000 uh, per month, which is uh, obviously the middle option for a reason. It's probably one of the more common uh, ballparks that um, we see. And so that's somewhere between, you know, 60 and 200,000 invoices a month, uh, a year, right? So um, great, good to know for us. All right, we're gonna keep moving here. Uh, and I'm gonna turn it over to Cliff to uh, start talking about some of the benefits and details of the Canon AP Automation Solution. Yes, thank you, Patrick. Um, we hope to cover um, some of the benefits that we, uh, we see highlighted here uh, in terms of what we describe as our, our future state or automation with, with our solution. Um, the AP solution you're about to see, it's, um, it's really very inclusive. Um, Enterprise imaging platform, or what we sometimes refer to as EIP, um, that includes and it supports all aspects of the solution, integration, capture, document creation, document distribution, and even archive and retrieval. 
It also um, includes iris extract technology, which enables the intelligent capture of documents without any type of supplier-specific template. So um, there's no need to, to maintain anything um, within that capture solution for specific suppliers or anything like that. Plus, it uses um, SOA Suite, which is service-oriented architecture from Oracle, um, part of something called Fusion Middleware. That's, that's something that comes embedded with our solution, and that allows us to interface with a wide variety of systems. And like Patrick mentioned, um, it's why the same basic solution can work with PeopleSoft, uh, JD Edwards, Oracle Business Suite, et cetera. Um, it's all delivered on this platform. It's more than just accounts table automation, but that's what you'll see today. And it includes the, the content management component of that Fusion Middleware, which can be used by your entire organization, not just the AP department. And finally, with, with Canon, um, there's a, a, we have our reputation on the line. Here's a company you can really trust. We're a global company, and we've got operations throughout the world, and it gives us the ability to support customers wherever they are, and even offer 24 by 7 support if that's required. Next slide, please. So I'll speak a little bit about um, the high-level uh, business process here as we go through um, as we go through our solution. This um, this diagram that you're seeing here depicts that process. Um, as you can see here, it it, it, it covers the, the entire um, life cycle of invoices, if you will, all the way from receipt by the organization all the way through creation of vouchers in uh, in Oracle PeopleSoft at the very end, where those are or schedule for payment and interface to general ledger and those sort of things just like you're doing today. Can you get the button, please? Because, yeah. What I want to point out to you, though, as we step through this, um, is that, um, like you see here, invoices at the very top left um, can be mailed um, through a postal system and then scanned by an organization or even received through email, like you see there. And in either case, they're, they're automatically imported and extracted into our solution. Um, where the uh, where the user interaction really starts to come in, though, if it's required, is that verification step that you see there uh, with the red the red box around it. And that's where I'll start with our demo. Um, and um, you know, once the invoice, if it's required to be verified, is passed on through, like you see there, into EIP, if it's required for workflow, um, and then it, and then it passes on in, and the people saw a voucher is automatically created and it, it posts to PeopleSoft, like I mentioned earlier. I do want to point out a few options here, though, which I think is pretty important. Um, one is that you've got multiple options for accounts payable personnel or even the people in your business or out in the field to do coding for non-PO invoices, for example. Um, if you just notice here, you have that ability to code these non-PO invoices in, uh, in the Verify module, like I'll show you here in a moment or even in the EIP workflow like you see there. Um, you'll see a couple couple samples of each when I do the demo. Um, press the button, please. And the same thing is route for routing for approval. Um, invoices that require approval, that can be done either through the EIP workflow, like you see here with the little orange boxes, or within uh, PeopleSoft. Uh, with PeopleSoft, it's quite common for our PeopleSoft customers. I'd say there's a sizable percentage of them that have already invested in the invoice approval workflow within PeopleSoft, and they they want to retain that going forward. Um, and if that's uh, if that's your your requirement, that's not a problem at all. We can basically feed the invoices straight through our solution and create them in PeopleSoft so that your workflow can take them from there. And if we do that too, we have the added uh, benefit of of having the content that was captured, including the invoice image retrievable from PeopleSoft. I'll show an example of what an invoice looks like when it's automatically approved through our solution and imports to PeopleSoft, and we'll have a screenshot or an example that shows what that invoice looks like when it's in the, uh, the PeopleSoft workflow as well. Next slide, please. Now, uh, I'll let Patrick finish this. I think Patrick and I work so closely together, either one of us can, can cover this slide. Um, I'll just mention, like, like I said earlier, every company has these different requirements um, for how they're going to process um, invoices. Um, we can be configured our solution to, to meet it, um, whatever your requirements right, might be. And I'll let Patrick speak a little bit about how Alir can, can help you determine the best path forward for that. Yeah, thanks, Cliff. So as Cliff said, really what we're going to highlight today is really the flexibility of the solution and the flexibility of it paired with PeopleSoft. And 
I think one of the reasons that uh, Canon and O'Lear work so well together is that um, we both understand the power of both systems. And what we O'Lear really likes to do during the design phase of the project and the requirements phase of the project is help you define where the best place to do coding is, where the best place to do workflow is. And we're going to show you some options on and of each and where you may be able to do this. And we're going to show you, explain to you maybe what would fit your organization best. But understand that this is really a part of our design and requirements phase with you to help you de determine where uh, coding should be done or where workflow should be done. So um, for, um, like we mentioned, one option, of course, is to do that um, that coding for non-PO invoices to your PeopleSoft chartered accounts. One option is to do that in that early step in the process, like we showed on the diagram, which is called the verify step. That's part of the of the Iris Extract solution, and it's completely supported there. Um, like we mentioned here, um, it can actually remember the coding that you did last time and auto populate that for you in the future. It's completely validated against the, uh, the PeopleSoft chart of account, though. So, however, you might do your coding there is um, if those same rules are enforced here as well, and you can code multiple distributions uh, for an invoice, just like in PeopleSoft. So, you know, we think what we found is that this is maybe uh, best or more suitable uh, organizations that um, where that might have fewer non-PO invoices, the PO invoices. Organizations where the AP clerks may be aware of how these invoices need to be coded and not have to reach out into the business too often to determine that or to route it. And, um, and it, you know, if you want a, a, a more seamless process where you're only touching the invoice one time, this could be the best option for you, or at least organizations that require that would be more inclined towards this option. Next slide, please. And then, uh, conversely, then um, once the invoice is captured, there's is the ability to um, to code that invoice in uh, in what we call EIP, the, the workflow component of our solution. Um, that gives us more flexibility, especially if there's a lot of communication that needs to take place um, within the organization to determine um, how to, uh, to code an invoice. So, so if an invoice comes in and and there's a requester on the invoice document. And the AP person really um, doesn't know what project or what account it should be charged to. It doesn't have a purchase order. With this option, they can route it to the person that might be the bill to or attention to line on the document or, or a dispatcher at a certain location. They can route it to them electronically through workflow. So chances are they're reaching out to that person in a manual environment today to determine how to, how to code an invoice. In this case, they'd just be sending it to them electronically. So they can do it um, within workflow and provide that same information. So this is, you know, more suitable we think for, for organizations that have high um, volumes of, of uh, non-PO invoices. Um, you know, the coding can be done before the vouchers created in PeopleSoft, um, and the AP person might not know how to code it. And it's also kind of critical too because if you don't want to code invoices in PeopleSoft, there's no additional license cost because. Our solution has no per user licensing like some licensing models for PeopleSoft might have. I'm not sure if you have that specifically, but some some cases that might be true. So there's no additional cost for this option in our solution. Next slide, please. Great. Yep. And then um, as you can tell, Cliff and I are kind of handing off on the PeopleSoft versus Canon solutions. So um, one of the other options uh, are for you to code your vouchers right within PeopleSoft. So um, you kind of have two options when doing that. Uh, if you bring in the invoices and um, are looking for the account coding to be completed, uh, you can stage the vouchers themselves and have users complete the coding with inside PeopleSoft. Uh, a lot of users also, a lot of organizations will also um, go the route of coding the original voucher to a suspense account of some sort uh, and then route that for um, uh, approval through the uh, workflow engine where users can correct the accounting. So um, this is really going to be, as we're talking about, you know, what types of organizations, this is going to be best suited for um, organizations that are more PO based and have more defined accounting uh, from those POs. Uh, you may find this more useful if uh, coding is 
uh, needing to obtain coding after the fact is more of an exception than a rule. Uh, but also uh, in the cases where you know your users are already uh, familiar and have access to PeopleSoft, as Cliff said, um, you do need uh, oftentimes user licenses on the PeopleSoft side. So, um, but also uh, very useful if you have uh, complicated combo edit rules and you want to make sure that people are coding uh, those vouchers inside of PeopleSoft. Um, and then uh, another advantage potentially to this model would be that uh, if you are wanting to voucher quickly and get that uh, that voucher and that amount uh, into your uh, AP module prior to approval um, so that you can do things like crew it or, or use it for other business processes. So um, again, we're going to go into some of these details and um, when you see it in the system, but um, just another coding option that you can uh, leverage. So we're going to talk, uh, well, actually, we're going to talk about a poll question first. Um, so we have uh, a third poll question here, which is just wanting to know uh, how you uh, approve your invoices today. So um, do you approve your invoices using PeopleSoft workflow? Or I guess if you're on another ERP, uh, you could consider that ERP workflow. Um, do you uh, use a third-party solution of some sort um, uh, for routing and, and approval? And uh, do you use paper signatures? Or uh, do you uh, not require any approval on your invoices in the uh, most likely in the realm of all PO based or, or something along that line. Give you guys just a moment or two here and okay, so it sounds like uh, some of you, quite a few of you use PeopleSoft workflow and uh, quite a few of you uh, are potentially using a uh, more um, manual process with paper signatures or things like that. Um, so uh, as we talk about uh, workflow coming up here, um, we'll kind of weave in some ideas uh, about both of those things and uh, how you may be able to replace some of your paper signatures uh, with either the Canon approval steps or the PeopleSoft one. So um, kind of the same message as before, and I'm going to turn it over to Cliff uh, first to talk about the Canon option for approving invoices. And again, you're going to see this in the demo, but um, uh, the same message here again, uh, different uh, organizations have different needs and, and different reasons for wanting to approve in one system or another. And uh, we would help define that criteria for you and, and um, design a, a system and a process that works best for you. So uh, turn over to Cliff to talk about how you could approve invoices inside of Canon. Thank you, Patrick. Um, and that was great poll results. It looked like almost an even split between PeopleSoft workflow and, and workflow that requires signatures. I know I do. I wonder about that quite a bit, what, what the general population does for that and what, how that breaks out. But but within the um, EIP, our Canon solution, like you can see here, um, absolutely um, approval of invoices are uh, is supported. Um, there's a quite complex um, set of approval policies and approval matrices that can be set up um, to, to handle this for both PO or non-PO invoices. Of course, approval is much more common for non-PO invoices, but we have seen it in some cases for, for PO invoices. Um, again, you don't have to be a PeopleSoft user to approve here within our solution. Um, you, you don't have to already have had PeopleSoft workflow or invoice approval workflow um, defined. And it's a very friendly web-based user interface, like you can see here. Very modern, very um, dynamic in terms of it resizing itself for the type of device that you're working on. And like you can see here, that, that ability for it to resize itself um, lends it for um, for really user-friendly approval, either in a desktop setting or on mobile devices such as uh, smartphones and pads and, and that sort of thing. And you know, more people are access, accessing the internet now through mobile devices and through desktops for several years now. So that's an important part of our solution as well. Great, yep. And then uh, the other option for approving invoices, uh, again, in the case that you need to approve them, is to uh, uh, approve them right within PeopleSoft. So many of you uh, that are already using it know that PeopleSoft has a very powerful workflow engine um, uh, called AWE. Um, you can define very simple or complex routing rules. and um, that's a big part of uh, a project uh, that re revolves around AP automation is helping you define those rules, helping you implement best practices so that those rules are both um, achieving your 
audit requirements, but not um, uh, becoming too complicated to build and maintain, right? Um, and there's uh, a number of reasons to potentially use PeopleSoft as well, um, or some combination of the two. But one of the reasons that I like to point out to people, current PeopleSoft customers that currently have PeopleSoft workflow, um, if you like your workflow, um, we can implement the Canon AP solution um, on the front end for intake and, and uh, using the OCR, which Cliff is all going to show you today uh, in just a moment. And um, you can build the voucher, and then your workflow engine can kick off the same way it does today. So you don't have to rebuild a complicated workflow you already have. Um, again, uh, it's great for people who have complicated combo edit rules, complicated security structures. Um, again, not that all of those things can't be defined in the Canon solution. They absolutely can. Uh, but it's just a matter of wanting to uh, replicate it or build it somewhere else. And if you've already built it, uh, I know uh, some people just don't want to open it back up, right? So, um, and again, uh, another reason potentially is if you have strong in-house PeopleSoft expertise and you want to uh, let them maintain a workflow and, instead of um, having to learn uh, a different workflow system. So, um, uh, we're probably not going to go too much into approval in PeopleSoft today just because I think a lot of you see it. but for that reason, um, what we did include is um, the PeopleSoft voucher approval screen. One of the big reasons um, that I know uh, Alir and a lot of our clients are really like the AP automation solution by Canon is also this aspect, which is this is the voucher approval page. And um, uh, you can see that the image of the invoice is actually delivered into the framework of what's called the related content inside of PeopleSoft, which is, again, delivered. and um, it's kind of great because the image of the invoice is actually stored in Canon's Enterprise Imaging Platform Repository. So it's not an attachment. It's not slowing down your PeopleSoft environment and servers, but it is very much available, as you can see, when you're going to approve an invoice. Um, this exact window is available and present on the voucher page as well. So if your AP clerks are on the vouchering page and they want to see the invoice, they can see it as well. Um, so um, just wanted to... Uh, put, point this out as a, a big differentiator as far as being able to view the image of the invoice and view all of the approval uh, metrics on the left, like the PO, the charging information, um, and, and see it all on one screen. Okay. Uh, with that, I think we are going to um, turn it over to Cliff, who's going to, uh, I'm sure what you're all anxiously awaiting, is seeing a demo of the AP Automation Solution. And Cliff, Thank I you, will Patrick. Yeah. make you the presenter. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. I am going to share it. Um, I, let me make sure that it's the right screen. You see my screen with the demo environment up? We do. Okay. Perfect. So, um, so thanks again, Patrick. I'll uh, I'll step happy here to step you through a uh, a quick demo of the solution. So first, um, like I mentioned, um, we'll start with the, um, the verification module that you see here. Um, these invoices were already received into the organization. I'll have three invoices here, just so you'll know. One invoice is a PO invoice that I'm going to match to a purchase order. One is a, a non-PO invoice that will show the approval within our EIP solution. And the other is a non-PO invoice that will just feed straight into EIP through EIP, I should say, into PeopleSoft so that the, um, the PeopleSoft approval workflow would be able to take it from there. Um, that, that second non-PO invoice, I'm just going to call it a check request because many organizations um, seem to process check requests that way where they're, they're considered pre-approved as far as our solution goes. So if you notice here, um, I've brought up the, the verification um, uh, uh, interface here as an AP person for an invoice that's already been received. And I'll show you what the queue looks like right after this invoice here. But if you happen to notice here, um, it, it's a purchase order invoice. You can see the PO number has been captured. And uh, I'll just step through the, the common steps um, that you'll find in the verification process. So if you notice here, um, the vendor is automatically identified based on that name and address information that you see captured from the document. There's, a, there's the vendor ID in PeopleSoft as well as the location. Um, there's the invoice number capture. 
You can also zone in on a special portion of, of the invoice document, like the top left corner there. Um, I can show you, too, like where the invoice date has been captured. If you notice, when I toggle my mouse into a specific field that shows where the data is captured, the, the, um, the tool actually zones in on the document itself with that little yellow shading to show where that information was captured from. That's just a little visual cue that gives the Verify operator the ability to match those up real quickly, just visually. And if they needed to make a correction or just to verify it, they can do so um, very quickly through that, just through that little process. Um, but if you notice, there's a PO number as well. It's PO invoice, like I mentioned. If I toggle down to the PO number, you'll see where it's, uh, it's captured from. An important part of the solution, too, is that it can be trained to recognize your invoices. Um, the system comes with common fields, or comes pre-configured, I should say, to capture all your most common fields from invoices, like the invoice number, like I mentioned there uh, earlier. But if a certain field didn't capture for any reason, for example, if a supplier printed a, an unexpected or unusual label for a field, like invoice number, we can train it just to see, give you an idea of how that looks. While my focus is in that invoice number field, I'm actually going to blank it out. I'll delete what was automatically captured. If you notice, then all I have to do is touch the image where that value actually is, like so, and it automatically captures that value through OCR. So I didn't have to type it in. Um, and once I've done that, um, it actually, all I have to do is press a hotkey at this point and the system will be trained to automatically recognize that, uh, that field to be captured from that, from that label, if you will. Again, I don't have to do that for invoice number because it comes, it comes pre-configured with the ability to capture all those fields like invoice number, PO number, dates, et cetera. But if something was unusual and, and something we would anticipate being captured, you can train it that way. I can toggle down. I'm at the header level of this invoice now. If I can toggle down, since the PO invoice line item tables are really important, if I toggle down through the, through the captured data here, you can see where the PO table was captured. That's all I did there was press a high key to toggle down. If you notice, um, this is where the, the table data is captured. In, in this example, I could capture more. I'm just happy to be capturing the, the amount that's ordered through the table and the total amount of each line, like you see down below. And I haven't, uh, I haven't manually matched this. If you notice, um, these lines are already matched to the PO because I've got a very simple rule um, in my in my little demo system here that that matches the the invoice lines to the PO if the quantities match. Um, so I'm able to automatically match these lines. In that case, I didn't have to do anything special here. But you do have the ability, if it doesn't automatically match, to manually match the invoice lines to the purchaser. I'll show you an example how that looks here. One second, I'll, I'll just insert an additional line down below here, although I don't have to process this, this invoice. If I do insert an additional line down below, you notice if I hit a hotkey from here, I'm actually brought into the a view, like I was earlier, um, where I can see the purchase order information from within um, PeopleSoft here from in the current module in PeopleSoft. I can just at this point um, choose a different line. If I need to match to a different PO line, I can I can do that just by selecting that line from here, and it'll match to that um, what we call a manual match. Again, I can toggle back and forth between header and uh, and and the um, line item table level, back at the header level here, and then to finish this invoice in the capture step, I'll just commit it. As you'll see here, I can file commit. And now that invoice has now been pushed out of Iris Extract Verify. And now you see what the job list looks like, which is like our queue, really. I didn't show it to you before that last invoice. But I'll bring in another um, another invoice here. This will be the, the invoice that automatically uh, feeds through um, EIP and goes into PeopleSoft so the workflow can take it from there. So again, I called it a check request doesn't have to be, but this happens to be a check request, which is like a pre-approved internal document, but it is related to a vendor. So like I mentioned earlier, um, the, the vendor was automatically identified, but just like I, I queried up that purchase order, if you see here, if you needed to make a correction in terms of the vendor that's captured off the document, 
while my focus is in that vendor number field at the top there, you can simply uh, query down below there the, the supplier um, master information from within PeopleSoft. And I'll just choose that vendor, Mel's Diner, that's originally on the document. Just to show you how you could override the automatic supplier identification that the tool makes if you need to, and it could be trained to do that as well by simply pressing a hotkey. And like I mentioned earlier, here's a good example. I've said if, a, if an invoice has a, um, a field that is um, not anticipated to be recognized, um, it can be trained. And I, I processed an invoice for this vendor before. That's why you'll see that the invoice number, since it's an internal document, it actually has a request number on it instead of an invoice number. But, but in PeopleSoft, we want to use the invoice. We want to create something with an invoice number. So I've actually trained it in the past to identify this request tag to be the, the label for the invoice number. This is a multi-page document here. It's a single page invoice, but it's a multi-page document. So you'll notice if I scroll down, I can actually see the attachment to it. In this case, the attachment to it is just a handwritten, the original invoice from the vendor that, that triggered this check request um, internal form here. So just if you want to follow down to any of the attachments, you'll see that. And again, what, the way that I'm pushing this all the way through is by using this approval policy that I call automatic that you see that I've chosen there. I don't have to provide a contact because that's a contact for EIP. This is going to go straight through EIP. I can enter a comment, though, which forms the beginning of an audit trail for this document. And like we mentioned, we can do the accounting here. Um, this accounting is defaulted, like I said earlier. Um, it can default based on the supplier. I've got it defaulted based on what you, the values that you see here. But I could, uh, I could change the accounting if I needed to, or I could perform the accounting in this step if it hadn't been done fresh there. And it, it validates, like we mentioned earlier, it validates against uh, PeopleSoft chart, account, chart of accounts if the, if the accounting is done here or in, um, in the IP. I can manually enter a line like you see here, and it'll show the list of values for that segment of, of the PeopleSoft chart of accounts within uh, that, that it's validating against. But I don't really, I don't have to do any more accounting to this here. It's really already done, so I just toggle back to the header level for this invoice and to process it through. It's not going to be, uh, not going to be anything but a simple step. You know, so I'll just go up to the menu and commit this just like I did the last invoice. I'll show one more invoice quickly that is going to actually process through our workflow for approval for EIT. So I'll try not to be too repetitive. You saw a lot of this before. It's a different vendor. See where the invoice number is captured. You see where the invoice date is captured. You can see where the total amount is captured. What's different here is I'm going to enter an approval policy that I'll call warehouse. Um, that's going to actually send it through EIP for approval, the non-PO invoice. And since I'm sending it out for approval, I'm going to decide to send it to a specific person. If you notice on the document, it says attention Blanche Caldwell. So I'm just going to choose that user um, from my list here to send it to um, for, for account coding or at least account review within, uh, within EIP. So you see, once I send this invoice out, I can enter a comment here as well to, to trigger an audit trail. But once I send this invoice out, you'll see that, um, that she's going to receive that within the EIP workflow. Um, she'll receive an email first, of course, and then she can just navigate from that into the um, into EIP to process that invoice. So, um, so like I just mentioned, every user that um, that has to work on an invoice will receive an email, much like PeopleSoft, letting them know that the invoice needs their attention. And this is just an example of what an, uh, an email looks like that someone like Blanche would receive. If it was just an approval uh, requirement, they would simply reply to this invoice if they wanted to with the verbiage approved, then it would be approved. Or they can simply click the link that you see there to view the invoice and it'll navigate them straight into EIP workflow, which I'll show you now 
just by logging into the EIP console or the application, which you can do as well. So what I've done here is I've logged into the EIT system as that user I just mentioned, Blanche Caldwell. And if I click um, that little envelope there, top right, that shows me my queue, all the invoices that need my attention. And once I do, it filters it to the invoices that need my attention. And if I look at the invoice at the very top, it's that non po invoice that we just now um, processed through the capture or the verify component. So you remember I put that policy in warehouse. I can go down to the invoice details if I need to um, by simply clicking that little link, the hyperlink that is on the invoice number. And you'll see I did, I did code the invoice earlier. So I'm really just reviewing the accounting in this step, but I could have just done the accounting fresh here. If you notice, I'll scroll down here and you'll see if I edit the invoice, I can see the accounting that was done earlier. But if I hadn't done it earlier, I could do the accounting fresh here and I can also change the accounting here if I needed to um, under this scenario. So you notice I just, all I did here as Blanche Caldwell was, was look at the coding. I, I believe that it's okay. Um, so I simply can, um, can take action on the invoice. I can enter an additional comment or see the workflow history on the invoice. <clears throat> so if you notice here, I can enter, um, I'll enter an additional comment to the approver. the last one for this month I said and all I have to do now is submit the invoice and like I mentioned um, it's going to follow an approval workflow within the IP and I've got it set up so that um, so that this invoice will automatically climb to a, a director in this division that's how I've set it up and, and she's not a director but for this other individual is Ivan Barrow so if Ivan Barrow signs in the system he'll see that same invoice just following it through He'll open his queue, and he will receive an email as well. He opens his queue, as you can see there. There's an invoice. The status is changing. There was pending approval. And if he opens it, you can see that it's the same invoice that we just looked at. Our status is different. Um, if he clicks on that, he'll actually see the workflow. You can see when Blanche Caldwell did the coding on it and all the other steps that happened, all the way back to the, uh, the capture step. You see down there, review accounting, please. It was entered at the point of capture by the AP clerk. From here, you can close the workflow history. And then just to point out to you, this is what that approval policy looks like, warehouse. Like I said, the director has to do the approval. And that's what Ivan Barrow is. And then you'll see also the coder entered a comment. This is the last one for the month. Blanche Caldwell entered that. So if you want to see that, you can see it. I'm just going to choose to approve the invoice. So push this on through. And then because Blanche Caldwell is a, she, she did the coding here, but she's also sort of an AP person, if you will, that has a broader um, security. She can see all invoices in the system. For, for this division anyway, and this, this business unit and people saw. But so I'll just log back in. It's hard not really to perform any more work, but just to show you those other invoices that we had. Um, if you notice uh, the Mel's Diner invoice that you see there, the second one from the top, that's the one that I said would push straight on through with the automatic approval policy. And it did, we didn't have to touch it with an EIP. Um, it's actually sitting in PeopleSoft right now. This one here, 0317. 19, um, 1987. We pushed straight on through into PeopleSoft. We didn't touch it. So in this case, the PeopleSoft workflow would, would take it from there. There's the approval policy, just in case you were wondering. If we look at the workflow log in the comment, we'll see that it just came straight on through. From here, we can see that the voucher was created. I entered a comment, the first check request for the supplier where at the capture step, and you see it just processed straight on through within the same minute the voucher was created. And then from here, what's, um, you know, what I think is pretty key is that you can navigate directly from the voucher. I'm not sure if you noticed that, but I just clicked that link to, uh, to bring up the voucher ID from within the EIP, and that navigates me directly into PeopleSoft so I can I can view the voucher and I can view the content that's attached to it. In this case, you'll see the 
the two-page invoice that's uh, that's been attached to the um, to the in, uh, the two-page document, I should say, has been attached to the invoice automatically without us having to do anything. Great, yeah, that's great, Cliff. I, and I I think one of the uh, I know you're kind of uh, uh, getting towards the end here. Uh, I think that's one of the great things too is that link right from that voucher link directly into PeopleSoft. And then you can actually build it on the PeopleSoft side to link back to here if you want the two to be, um, um, you know, linked back and forth. Um, but uh, great uh, way to show that. And uh, one of the things we always like to stress, I know Cliff and I, when we show people this, is on that one, if you're if you're not stopping it in EIP at all, uh, from that step of saying commit in inside of verify, the earlier step Cliff showed you, it's actually a voucher there uh, just within uh, less than a minute, which is uh, pretty impressive. Thank you, Patrick. I'm actually done showing the demo. Thank you for your comments. So if you want to take the, the control back. Yeah, great. And I think we're going to roll right into a poll question here. Um, so this is a question for here. It's just to kind of gauge uh, if any of you have any automation that you've uh, begun or have in progress at the moment. So. Um, the kind of groups here are that you have no progress and everything is kind of paper. Uh, maybe you have a little bit of progress, maybe you have an imaging solution in place, or um, but it's, it's mostly manual still. Uh, maybe you have automated workflows in and you have a slight progress, or maybe you have a, a more touchless uh, solution and uh, uh, you're just looking at uh, kind of what's out there today. So. Uh, I know we're uh, getting close on time, so we'll leave this open for a moment and then we'll uh, wrap it up. All right, so you should see the um, the uh, results on your screen. And it looks like most of you are uh, making some good uh, progress already. Maybe you, again, have some imaging solutions in place. And uh, feel free to uh, comment any of those things in the uh, question section here. Um, but really, the, the last thing that we want to wrap up here really is that to talk a little bit about what you can expect from um, for improvement with uh, putting in an AP automation solution. So um, you know, really, our, the top performers that are performing AP automation in, uh, in the best ways and, and leveraging solutions uh, like the K Canon AP automation solution um, are paying you know over 90% of their invoices on time. Um, they're capturing 97% of early pay discounts, um, and really they're also increasing the productivity of your their staff. So that number there of um, 23,000 invoices annually per FTE. Um, your pre-automation, if you're manually keying invoices. Generally, uh, we see that number somewhere in the six to 7,000 invoices per year are totally processed by uh, an individual, um, as opposed to someone that can process using an automated tool um, over three times that, um, and really lowering that total cost to process a single invoice. Um, you're also gonna experience a much higher rate of um, matching to invoices and POs on the first pass, um, as opposed to uh, manually matching, and uh, only having to um, uh, address and correct uh, less than 1% of all invoices. Um, I think you'll find metrics as far as high as around $50 to correct in a, a miskeyed voucher or a miskeyed invoice. It really becomes all the rework to, you know, unapply things, uh, redo approvals, uh, hopefully not, but potentially, you know, bring payments back. Um, so really, when uh, errors are made in vouchering, it can be a very expensive uh, venture for any of us. So um, one of the things I also want to throw out is um, that we've seen um, on implementations that we've performed together with Alir and Canon, uh, we've seen people who are typically processing um, a voucher, meaning receipt of invoice to voucher uh, is taking somewhere between five and eight business days, um, really go from that to same day vouchering. So the day you receive the invoice is the day that it's a voucher in the system. And that's really an impressive turnaround um, and really can speed up all of these business processes for you. And uh, our last poll question that we'll have for today uh, is just to ask uh, if you think 
uh, this, solution, this solution could benefit your organization? Um, simple yes, no. So we'll leave this open for just a moment and um, get you to weigh in on if uh, you think this could help you. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and close that. Uh, and uh, sounds like uh, we have a pretty overwhelming yes, which is great. And and um, you know this this type of um, implementation has really uh, changed a lot over the last couple of years. I think uh, what Cliff showed you today, if you think about um, what uh, OCRs used to be, very template based, very rigid. Um, uh, I think that the, this solution has a, a much different um, type of implementation and, and, and use. So um, at this point, we will open it up. I know we're running a little bit out of time, so we'll, we will open it up if anyone has any specific questions. One question that did come in during the presentation was, um, do you need to be utilizing purchase order workflow in order to utilize this solution? And the answer is no, um, uh, the solution does work great if you have POs in place, um, but that's also not necessary. And um, as far as the workflow, whether you are approving invoices inside of the Canon solution, like Cliff showed uh, just a moment ago, or within PeopleSoft, uh, neither of those uh, relates directly to PO workflow. Um, I will say a lot of people will mirror their PO workflow or their requisition workflow um, uh, in their implementations, but it's not necessary. Okay, so we will follow up with, um, if any of you do have questions, please be sure to uh, post them in the questions section. We do follow up on all the questions and will answer them in a follow-up document as well as send the answers to the individual, uh, uh, to all the questions to the group. So uh, please be sure to um, uh, question, put any questions you have in that questions portal. Um, for those of you who um, are looking forward to an upcoming conference, um, both Alir and Canon will be um, at ReConnect this year, which is uh, July 17th to the 19th uh, in Chicago, um, out near O'Hare. Um, as you can see, um, not only are we uh, solutions partners, but we apparently also book our booths very close to one another. Um, so Alir will be in 403 um, and um, Canon will be in 405. Um, I will be doing a presentation on Thursday around um, uh, PeopleSoft and, and accounts payable. Um, so please, uh, and I will be at the conference all week. So uh, please feel free to stop by and uh, visit with either or both of us, and we'd love to talk to you there. Um, and uh, lastly, thank you uh, very much for coming today. So um, you'll see on the screen um, both the contact information for uh, Alir's Director of Sales, John Scott, uh, and Lisa Thorne, who is the uh, Partner Manager and Channel Development Manager uh, that works between uh, Alir and Canon. Uh, so please feel free to reach out to either one of those to uh, get a hold of Cliff and I or anyone else on our teams to answer any questions you may have, um, maybe see uh, the product again in a more one-on-one -on -one setting um, and or, um, you know, Send any kind of request for proposals or things like that. Um, other than that, we really thank you all for your time and uh, hope that we've shared some useful information with you. I think we're right at the hour, so um, everyone have a great rest of your day and um, thank you again.